This video is going to demonstrate the use of breakpoints in MATLAB. So MATLAB provides a few handy features to assist you in debugging your code. Debugging simply means identifying problems in your code and fixing them. So I've got some example code right here. The details aren't too important. We saw this code in an earlier video. If I run it here, what happens is these four different figures pop up, graphing some basic functions. Great, there they are. But the purpose of this video is to demonstrate breakpoints. So you see these numbers on the left side right here. And when I hover over the numbers, there's a little red box. And I'm gonna click on line 24 figure right there. And when I click, there's a darker red box that remains behind. Now at this point, if I go up and click this button right here, run in advance, What's going to happen is MATLAB is going to run my code up until line 24 and then it's going to pause and it's going to wait on me. So let me do that. Click run in advance. The shortcut for that, by the way, is control shift enter, but I don't quite use breakpoints often enough to memorize that. It's relatively easy, right? Because our usual shortcut is control enter. So it's just control shift enter. Okay. It doesn't look like much happened. Our command window seems to have changed from two angled brackets to K and then two angled brackets. And if you have a really sharp eye, you may have noticed that two entries got put in the workspace over here, X's and Y's. Perhaps the biggest visual change is that there's this green highlight right here. But what happened was MATLAB ran all our code from top to bottom up until this line right here, and then it stopped. It did not run the figure line, it waited. So these two vectors were created and placed in the workspace. And now MATLAB is waiting on me to do whatever I wanna do before it continues. And I can go to the command window and I can interrogate X's or Y's. I can ask X's, what is your length? Ah, oh, 51. All right, X's, what is your third value? Oh, it's 0 0.4. Great. And I could do the same thing with Y's. You may have noticed these buttons appeared at the top. Continue, step, step in, step out, and stop. I'm going to focus on the step button. If I click step, notice where the green highlight goes. So the green highlight progresses by one line and figure pops up right here. It's an empty figure because we haven't called the plot command yet. We haven't called title or X label or Y label. If I click step again, now unfortunately it backgrounded the figure there, but I bring the figure back to the forefront and look, now we've got the plot, but we haven't given it a title or an X label or a Y label or turned the grid on. So as I as I get the idea that I could resize my screen in order to fit the figure on the screen alongside the video, now I can click step and we'll see a title will pop up and then an X label will pop up and then a Y label will pop in and then the grid will appear. And if I keep clicking, we'll go on to the next figure. Now that just created a new vector of Y values. Then I click again. There's a new figure right there. Let me just move it down here so we can more easily see it. And then step, the plot appears, the title, the X label, the Y label, and the grid. And I can keep going through this. So the advantage of breakpoints is that you can set a pause on your code, and then you can progress through your code one line at a time. This is very useful if maybe you think something has gone wrong and you're trying to investigate. We can still run commands in the command window to see what sort of data we have, what sort of data we have on one line of code and maybe how it's different on the very next line of code. Now continue right here. We'll continue onward to the next breakpoint if there is one. So I'll put a breakpoint right here on line 47 and then click continue. Great. And so it just generated figure three and my code ran all the way down to line 47. Step in and step out are for use with function calls. So even on this line right here, right, we've got y's equals the square root of x's. Now what if instead of square root, we had like a user defined function or a not built in function, a function that was written in MATLAB code rather than like compiled behind the scenes. And I press step. Would it run the entire line? Or what if we want to look into the code that's inside that function? What if we want to investigate that MATLAB code and run through it one step at a time? Well, you can do that with step in. If this was a user defined function, for example, I could click step in, and then we'd basically see our window teleported into that functions code, and we could step through that function code one step at a time. And if we were finished with the function, we could just go ahead and click step out, it would take us back to our main window over here and we'd be done with the function. And stop, of course, is just gonna interrupt all of our running of our program. So if I click that, it's just finished. It's as if we didn't run any further code there. The breakpoints do stick around. You can just click on them again to remove them. You can add as many breakpoints as you want. 
under the run button, or if it's already running under the continue button, there's a pull down menu and you can clear all the breakpoints. You can click here to set them, but it's much easier to just click on the numbers themselves. Or you could even enable and disable. I almost never use any of these ones, but potentially they could be useful. And you can also set some instructions for how to do error handling. I'm going to click on clear all breakpoints. Great, so they all disappear. And there's just one last thing I want to show in this section. You have to make sure your file is saved in order to set breakpoints. So if I click on the plus sign up here and just add a new file, and it doesn't really matter what I put in. I'm just going to, I don't know, x equals 7, y equals 3, whatever. I'm not even going to do anything with those. And I can run it. It runs great. That's all fine and good. But if I click on the numbers, nothing happens. And if I go down to the run menu here, the pull down menu, I can clear the breakpoints, but I can't set any new ones. You can't set breakpoints unless your file is saved. Now, if I go and save it, and I'll just save it into the default folder there as untitled, now I can click on the numbers and actually set breakpoints. Now you might have noticed I did click here and it didn't set anything. If there's no code on the line, you can't set a breakpoint there. So I can't set a breakpoint on line 2 or line 5, but why would you need to? When I do set a breakpoint like this one and I click run in advance, the code will run up to but not including this line of code. So hopefully that's useful to you in your MATLAB debugging when you're frustrated and you're trying to solve some issue and you're like wishing you could get a better handle on your code, run it more slowly. Maybe you're thinking about putting in some intermediate displays or something. Well, maybe you don't need to do that. You can simply run breakpoints and then put the displays in the command window, figure out what's wrong, and then fix the issue without muddying up your code too much. And the use of breakpoints isn't just limited to displaying things out or checking the length of your vectors or matrices or whatever you can actually modify the data in the middle of its running. Let's look at those Y values for a second. Let's look at what is the 25th Y value. All right, it's 121.51. I'm gonna change it to 1000. All right, and then it echoes back out the entire uh, vector there. And then I'm going to click Step. All right, so my figure pops up on the screen. I'm gonna click Step again. Check out this little bump right down here. I didn't make my magnitude large enough. I should have made it more than 1,000. should have made it like 10,000. But I modified the data in the midst of running my program. You can do that. I don't know if that's a frequent use case, but that is something that you can do. Debugging with breakpoints in Octave is remarkably similar to what it looks like in MATLAB. But of course, the interface is going to be slightly different. So I think it's worth showing here as well. I'm going to click on uh, any particular line here, let's say line 24, and then I don't click on the number, I just click just to the left of it, and I can set that little red circle. That's a breakpoint right there. You can also use the buttons at the top. This uh, red circle right here will toggle a breakpoint on or off. You can't actually set it on a blank line of code. You have to set it on a line that actually has some text on it, some executable text. So that's why you might have seen it like it jumped down to the next line when I clicked up there. I can toggle it on and off with that button. I can remove all the breakpoints with this red circle with an X through it. But uh, let me go ahead and put that breakpoint back and then click run right here. And the code will run up to that point. These two vectors have been created and put in the workspace. I can interrogate those vectors if I want. I can ask what's the size of X's and get my results right there. And I'm still, uh, I'm still running this code right here. It's just waiting for me to proceed onward from line 24. And these are all my various options that I've got. So I'm going to use the step button right there. Typically, that's going to be my most commonly used button. So I click that one and then it goes down to the next line where it generated the uh, plot right here. Well, it hasn't quite actually filled it in. Sorry, it actually ran the figure line of code and now it's not yet ready to run line 25. That's so it's waiting to run line 25. That's what the little yellow arrow is indicating. So I click step again. And now the plot has appeared and now it's waiting to put the title on. So you see there's no title until I click step and now there's a title on there. And there's various other options that are similar to in MATLAB. Step in to step into a function, step out to step out of a function, continue to just continue running all the rest of the code down to the next breakpoint if there is one, and then stop or quit debugging mode right here. So it's pretty much exactly the same as MATLAB. It's just a slightly different interface. And I actually think it's a quite nice interface. So um, yeah, that's about it. I don't think I need to say anything else about uh, the breakpoints in Octave. And I think that's all you need. These buttons up here will do it. 
You just click right next to the line of code that you want to set a breakpoint on, and you just click again to remove them. Very similar to MATLAB.